we're speaking to you on behalf of A2IM. My name is Hannah Langtree and I am the Executive Administrative Assistant for A2IM. And my name is Matthew Siriani. I am a professional audio engineer in New York City as well as an independent music artist. The point of this video today is for us to demonstrate some of the best audio practices for live streaming your music from your homes because we know a lot of you guys are live streaming your music nowadays. First things first, you're going to want to test your internet speed to make sure that it can handle a live stream. So you're going to go to any browser and go to Google. You're going to search test internet speed and click on the run speed test button here. At first, it's going to test your download speed for a few seconds. And then it's going to test your upload speed, which is the part that we're most concerned with. You're going to want at least 1.5 megabits per second in order to have a live stream. As you can see, our Wi-Fi is running around 2.32 megabits per second upload speed, which means that we should be able to run a live stream. The next step is to properly set up your streaming software. So we're going to be using Zoom as an example, although most softwares for streaming will have these same settings. Go into your preferences and make sure that you're on your audio preferences. Under audio preferences, you should see the advanced settings. Go into those. In advanced settings, you'll see the background noise settings. These are helpful when you're having conversations over Zoom, but it's not helpful with music because of the dynamic nature of music. You're going to wanna to make sure all of these settings are disabled. Unfortunately, on Zoom, you cannot disable echo cancellation, so we'll just leave it on auto for right now. The next thing we're going to discuss is the room in which you're hosting your live stream. The size, shape, treatment of, and positioning of yourself and your laptop or cell phone in the room are going to be the most significant contributing factors to the overall sound quality of your live stream when you are using a laptop or cell phone as the primary microphone source. With your size of your room, you're going to want to choose a larger room in your house rather than a smaller one. This is because in a smaller room, the acoustical reflections are going to be more rapid, which is going to cause a short echo, otherwise called a slap delay, which can be very disorienting. Sounds like this. Now with a larger room, the acoustical reflections are going to be a little bit more drawn out, which is going to sound more similar to a natural room reverb, which is going to be a little more balanced and sound something like this. When it comes to the shape of your room, you're going to want to choose a room that's rectangular or as irregular as possible. Basically anything other than a square. And the reason for that is because the more closely your room resembles a square in dimensions, the more likely you are to get nodes and resonances, which depending on the key of your song can make your whole performance sound slightly out of key. Now up next is going to be treatment of your room. And basically, you're just going to want a room with a bunch of different types of surfaces in it. You want absorption, which is soft surfaces. Like a big soft couch, carpeted floor, a mattress. Or blankets. Especially if you can hang them on the walls. Pillows. Put them in the corners, because that's where you're going to get bass resonance buildups. Or cats. And then you're gonna want dispersion, which is rigid, uneven surfaces. Breaking up large areas of walls with things like picture frames and different textures. Ceilings like this with slats, texture, different heights. Bookshelves or cabinets and shelves with all kinds of different objects like this, or even stairs. And finally, your ultimate enemy when it comes to room treatment is large areas of hard, flat surfaces, such as a wall. So if you have anything like that in the room you're using for your live stream, you're gonna wanna make sure to hang something up there, like a blanket. If you do have access to a rectangular room, don't set yourself up in a corner or have yourself or your laptop anywhere near there. That's gonna sound similar to the bathroom. 
This is the ideal setup. You're gonna to wanna to take your laptop, place it along the shortest wall, one to two feet away, facing the chunk of the room. You're gonna to wanna to place yourself towards the center of the room facing the laptop. The reason for this is there's a nice solid path of the direct sound to the laptop with a little bit of air there, which acts as a natural compressor. Now look how far the reflections have to travel before they get to your laptop. This is going to give you the best ratio of direct sound to reflections, and it will make your whole live stream sound more balanced. Now this is a vast oversimplification of how acoustic reflections occur in a room, but the basic idea is there. set up in the proper positioning and you've traded your room best you can, before your live stream, you're going to want to check your input volume or your gain, if you know what that is. So you're going to your system preferences, go to your sound and your input, and here you'll see right off the bat, my input volume is too loud. I'm hitting the top here and that will cause distortion. So I'm going to take that and turn it down until the majority of what I'm doing is well within the spectrum here. But what you're gonna wanna do is check the loudest part of your performance. Maybe it's a big guitar chord, or maybe it's a belting section. But right now, let's just use a snap as an example. Ah, you see how my snap was hitting the top here? That's gonna cause distortion. And you don't want the loudest part of your live stream to be distorting. So I'm gonna turn it down even more to make sure that the loudest part of my performance is still well within the realm of an acceptable input level. Oh, that's still a little too loud. Let's go down a little bit more. Great, perfect. See, the loudest part of my performance is almost hitting the top and that's what you want. So next we'll be giving you some additional advice. First, make sure you use the internal microphone in your laptop or your phone over using a headset, headphones, or earphones. This is because those are so close to your mouth, which is your sound source, and it'll cause distortion. Next, if you're going to use a non-acoustic instrument such as a keyboard or an electric guitar, make sure you record yourself beforehand in order to ensure you have a proper balance between your voice and your instrument. Finally, we recommend that you don't sing along with a karaoke track or background music only because it'll come off as harsh or muddy or anemic. So, we hope you have enjoyed this video and learned something new in how to have the best sounding live stream using what you already have at home. And our contact info is in the description below the video in case you have any further questions or comments. You can also look forward to future installments of videos like this on tips on how to have the best audio practices for independent musicians at home. So on behalf of A2IM, thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you for the next video. Stay safe. Bye.